Hi, I'm Professor Stephanie, and I'm here today on Kent campus at FCCJ in the Learning Center, or what we used to call the library. What I want to talk about today is lifelong learning, and I am a big fan of this. Just think about it. Think about where you are now in your life. How old are you? And if you were to live as old as my mother, which is 82, how many more years do you have to go? I talked to my mom on the phone this morning, and she was very excited. Her outing this afternoon is going to be to a college in Rome, Georgia, where, believe it or not, she's taking a class on literature. Okay? So remember, 82, she's off to the college to take a class. A friend of mine gave me an article from the AARP not too long ago, and it talked about creativity and age. And the whole article was around when, during our life, we're most creative. And that happens to be in our 50s, our 60s, and yes, our 70s. Let's think a little bit about this. Why do you think that by the time we get to be 50, we're ready to be creative? What are some ingredients that would work for you in your 50s to be creative? I've got two things I want you to think about. One is, I think by the time you hit 50, you lose that need to please everybody else. Do you notice that? You know, maybe your mom told you you weren't going to be good at drawing, or your dad told you you couldn't make money in interior design, or who knows, maybe that art teacher told you something. Well, at 50, we decide to let that all go, and we start really living from our passion. We start living from what we're really interested in. So my cue to you is, if you hear that little voice inside of you says, hmm, I always did want to learn how to draw, it's time to do it. And age is not a factor. I think when you hear yourself say you're too old to learn something, ah, that's a little bit more about fear than about learning. Let's look at another factor around age and learning. Let's remember that at 50, we bring a lot of wisdom with us, a lot of experience. Getting to 50, we've learned a lot of different kinds of things. We know more about ourselves. We know how we like to learn. We know what's best for us. And so we take all of this wisdom with us, and we can add that to the opportunity to try new things, to learn new skills, and to enjoy our life to the max. All right, I've got a few people that I want to just mention to you that were very successful with this theory of at the end of life being successful. One of them is Sam Walton. You all know Mr. Sam Walton. He started Walmart. Did you know that he was in the retail field for 20 years before he opened his first store? What the heck was he doing for 20 years in retail? Well, let me tell you, he was doing great research. He learned about what he liked about retail, he learned what he didn't like about retail, and he knew how his store was going to be different. He took 20 years to do that. And quite frankly, we know how successful he's been. Let's look at another person, the gentleman Dr. Seuss, the children's book author. We know that Dr. Seuss, the books he wrote were revolutionary. His first book was not published until he was 53, okay? 53. He took time in his life to develop that style. He created his own words. You know he created his own characters. All of those things took time. And frankly, the publishing world wasn't ready for him either. If you remember, when his first book was started, it was the Tom, Dick, and Jane books that were out there, not Dr. Seuss. He revolutionized the children's book industry and didn't happen until he was 53. We also know some of the masters, too, did very successful things late in their life. We can look at someone like Frank Lloyd Wright. The Guggenheim Museum in New York City was built when he was in his 80s. Uh, Antonio Stradivari, his two most very famous violin, were built when he was 93. So, let's not forget, when we're ready to learn something new, when we're ready to be creative, we can do that in our 50s, our 60s, and our 70s. And I think we can do that here on a college campus, we can do that at our local museum with workshops, or just some neighborhood friends that get together to do a collage group. So I'll see you in the classroom. Thanks.